So how do you think we get around this kind of like, it's kind of related, so an anti-rational thing, and I guess it's, it's related to tribalism, because, so, so in 2016, obviously we have the US election, and uh, everyone loves to see kind of, you know, libtards lose the election and so on, and so uh, you know, even though I know Trump is a bad guy, I know he's anti-rational, I know his policies are bad, but, but his victory makes me feel successful because we've beaten the, we've beaten the liberals. Like, how, how do we get past that? Like, how do we... Yeah. First off, it's hard, right? Like, yeah, because, because hard. I mean, like, I feel like I, I'm at least like somewhat enlightened and I've read Ayn Rand, I understand her philosophy, yeah. but, but still I have that tribal mentality of like, I'm happy Trump won. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'd say two things. One, don't call them liberals. Liberal is way too good of a word for them. <laughs> like, liberal means pro-liberty. Liberal historically meant pro-liberty. So liberals in every tradition except the American tradition means good guys, right? Um, and, and now we have to call, you know, people call themselves classical liberals to differentiate because we, so I wouldn't call them liberals. They're, they're leftists, they're progressives. They're, even progressive I hate because progressive means you're pro-progress and they're not for pro-progress, they're anti-progress. So I would just call them lefties, you know, leftists. Um, I mean, I I was very mixed during the election, right? So, because I, on the one hand, I was happy Hillary lost, <laughs> but I was sad Trump won. So I I was torn. On the one hand, I was watching CNN during the election night and watching them all cry and going, "Yes, I'm so happy they cried." And then I was watching Fox and watching them all run and being sad that they were all blah, 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 right? So I was completely torn apart during the election. But, but what you really, you know, tribalism has a real hook into us. It's really hard to abandon it because we're raised very much on this idea. And, and tribalism is also the lazy solution, right? It's when you don't think for yourself, it's easy to, 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 to let the group do the thinking for you. Of course, the group has to have a leader to do thinking for you. It's easy to associate yourself with a group. And then whatever the group, you feel comfortable in the group. It's, it's, you know, it's like having a group of friends over. You, 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 know, you don't have to think too much for yourself. You just follow them. Um, so tribalism is appealing if you're lazy. I'm not caught, I, no. accusing you of being lazy, but if you're lazy, it's, if you're intellectually lazy, right? It's it's very appealing because you don't have to think through all the problems. And look, a lot of the issues are complex. They're not simple, particularly in the world in which we live, right? If we lived in a in a purely capitalist society, life would be a lot easier. Decisions would be a lot easier. But when we lived in this mixed world with people with mixed motivations and mixed moral characters, and 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 mixture of good positions and bad positions. It's hard to subtly think through every issue out there. And I think it's much easier to, in a sense, okay, I'm, I'm just, you know, whatever, I'm just on the right. I just hate those guys. So whatever is the opposite of those guys, I'm for. Well, but it doesn't work that way because the world doesn't divide itself into what they believe and the opposite of it. And there might be, and usually is a third alternative to the two. That are presented. So tribalism is, is, is appealing, and of course, there are all kinds of tribalism. The most primitive form of tribalism, which unfortunately we're seeing rise up in the world right now, is ethnic tribalism, racism of different formats. So I'm gonna I'm gonna associate with people who look like me. I'm gonna associate with people who have the same color skin as me, or, or from the same tribe, real tribe. That's why it's called tribalism, right? Because the real tribe. And you see that, you see that particularly in Europe these days. But you're even seeing it in the United States now, unfortunately. Uh, you know, we only associate with people who look like us, and it's easy that way, because people who look like us, yeah, they must think like us, and, and they must know, and, and we can trust them, and you know, we don't have to we don't have to be shocked by things that are different and and, 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 and unusual and strange. Uh, so everything's comfortable. It's very emotionally pleasing. Well, it isn't, but for them it is. If you, again, if you're intellectual lazy, it's very emotionally pleasing. To me, it's emotionally horrific, right? It's, it's, it's horrible. Uh, but, but there are other kinds of tribes. So one tribe is political party. I'm just, I hate the left, I'm on the right, and therefore everything the left does, I'm opposed to it. Or, or, or other forms of tribalism, uh, you know, we're, we're American. 
or American, therefore the Chinese, they look different from us and you know, they put tariffs on us, that much first, uh, so we're going to hurt them, right? So, so anything that hurts them, that's good, I'm for that, right? So that's a tribe, that's a tribalistic attitude, tribalistic mentality. You know, America, anything that's so-called good, American is good, anything that's outside of America is bad, right? Only drive American cars, buy American, right? I mean, and that tribalism, I have to say, is the saddest of all tribalism. Because America is the first country, and really the only country in human history, to be founded on the opposite idea. America was founded on the idea that you're an individual, and you should live for yourself, for your own pursuit of happiness. And it's not what America wants, it's what you want that matters. And America is there just to protect you, and to protect your freedom. And if you want to buy stuff <clears throat> from China or Korea or Japan or Germany or whatever, that's your business. Nobody should tell you what you can and cannot do, what to buy or what not to buy. And that made in America means nothing. The only important thing is what you want, what is consistent with your values. And there's no such thing if you're an individualist. There's no such thing as an American job. There's no such thing as a Korean job. It's just a job for an individual. And if somebody else competes them away, then you don't have the job anymore. And it doesn't matter if the person competing you away lives 5,000 miles away on a different continent or lives next door to you. It's competition, and it's your job to get better. It's your job to do a better job. It doesn't even matter if that guy competing with you 5,000 miles away is getting a subsidy. You might not like it, but, you know, that's your responsibility is your life, and to do the best that you can with your life, right? Not as an American, but as an individual. And America is a great country because, was a great country, is a great country because it protects those rights. It protects your ability to live as an individual. But not because it makes good cause. Not because its farmers are good. Who cares? Right? You buy the best food, the most delicious food, the best cause, the cheapest cause. The, what, what is consistent with your values? So we've seen this shift to tribalism. And it's very sad, particularly in America. Because in the rest of the world, to some extent, it's always been tried. It's never had this shift. Um, and it's going to be hard to combat because individualism requires effort. Individualism requires work. It requires you to judge. It requires you to value. It requires you to pursue your values as an individual. Not to accept what the group says, not to accept what your neighbor says, not to accept what people look like you say, but to make decisions for yourself, to use your reason to make decisions and then act on those decisions in pursuit of what you think is right for you, what's good for you. It means engaging that reason. It means really being rational and consistently rational. And that's work and that requires effort. And, and too many people today are either lazy or be taught not to use their mind or at the, at, the, at the best, just not taught how to use their mind. You know, so many young people in America, the, the educational system in America is such that, that students are taught much more about emotions than they are about thinking. Thinking skills, critical thinking skills are not developed. And that's why you get Students not wanting safe spaces because somebody might say something that'll offend them. But but if you're a thinker, if you're a critical thinker, and somebody says something false to you, then you say, Oh, that's false. It doesn't offend you. If somebody says something that is negative towards you, you go, Well, that's stupid, you know, so what? Right? But that's a thinking approach. Right? But if you're emoting, somebody says something that offends you, oh I feel bad. That must that's wrong, because I feel bad. My feelings are the standard. My emotions are the standard of what's good and what's bad, what's right and what's wrong. And if, in my view, if you undercut reason, tribalism will always follow. Tribalism is, is, is what you get when, when you undercut people's capacity to think critically for themselves. They're looking for comfort. They're looking for somebody to tell them what to do. And usually that's the group or that's the leader who's going to tell them what to do. So the world's moving towards tribalism, which means the world is moving towards authoritarianism, which is where what we're seeing in Europe and in the United States and in China and, and I think elsewhere. What we need today
what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. If you enjoy the show, if uh, if you on regularly and you get value from what I do, then I'd appreciate support uh, to to make this show possible and and to keep it going and to. Uh, we will get on a much more regular schedule starting in October, and we will be doing a lot more shows starting in October. I'm going to be traveling a lot less next year and, and uh, through the fourth quarter of this year. So once I'm traveling less, we'll get a lot more shows. So I'm hoping that you guys will consider supporting the show. You can support it through still through Patreon. Uh, you can support it through subscribestar.com, and you can support it on my website, Your On Book Show dot com slash support so um, those of you who might not be supporting me yet please do so those of you who are supporting me you know if you'd consider kind of on an annual basis doing a 10 percent increase that would be fantastic and uh, so that we can uh, increase what we do uh, over time